there, world. It is Wednesday. I am Henry. Happy new comic book day. It is, of course, a very exciting week in the world of comics. We have a lot of stuff on this wall. We've got a lot of people here weathering the storm, getting very excited for a lot of great books. So if you've never watched us before, what we're going to do is we're going to walk down this entire wall. We're going to talk about all these fantastic books that are coming to you. Then we're going to stop at the end, and then we're going to talk about the books even more. So there's a lot of stuff to enjoy and a lot of great books. So we're going to get super excited. And in the meantime, I'm going to tell you guys about a super cool signing that we have this Friday in Midtown Comics downtown with Greg Pack and Corey Smith for Weapon H number one, which of course comes out this week. And of course, we're going to be talking about it. So we're going to get started. We're going to go right off the wall and we're going to talk about some of the very cool staff recommendations. So first off, we've got Jason going for Mighty Thor, issue 705. Jason is a huge Thor fan, and he has been loving everything that Jason Aaron's been working on for years, and Russell Donovan have brought together a crazy story in the latest installment. We'll talk about that more in a bit. We've also got Taylor going with the latest issue of Damnation, a Doctor Strange-centric storyline. Very cool stuff going on there. We've also got Luke going with Amadeus Cho in Incredible Hulk 714, the start of World War Hulk 2. Some very cool stuff. Then Fabian, you know, he's always got he's always got his finger on the pulse of those indies. So he went with the Spider King issue number two. And then Nelson went for Weapon H number one. Seems to be something in the air. Everybody's talking about this Weapon H guy. You know, I think he's pretty cool. Now we are going to get started with some of the brand new books that are coming to you this week. And first off, we've got Department H Depth issue number 24 some very cool stuff a very cool cover i really like the way that they play with design and something i always dig is that these are always wraparound covers so county from cullen bunn and dark horse issue number 29 as well as the second issue of matahari very cool book from burger books now we also have a couple more Dark Horse books you might want to check out, including the brand new Usagi Ujimbo, The Hidden. Very cool new series if you're looking to get into Usagi Ujimbo and you've never taken the time. Well, your time is up. This is, this is the greatest opportunity you're going to have for quite some time, so you should definitely be checking out Usagi Ujimbo. Then we also have the brand new issue of Vinegar Teeth. Then we hit DC, and it's a cool week for DC, and we start off with a brand new issue of Aquaman, issue number 34, from Dan Abnett. A couple different covers here. I really fancy this Joshua Middleton cover. Very cool, as we see the Ocean Master re-emerging in the life of Aquaman. Of course, brotherly squabbles aren't unknown to those in royal lineages, but none are deadlier than this war of brothers. Then we also have the brand new issue of Batman. A couple different covers here, as we've got... Issue number 43 with Poison Ivy facing off against Batman and Catwoman, but it's not just Poison Ivy. It's the whole world, according to Ivy. Very cool storyline from Tom King and Mikhail Jenin. We got the main cover and the very cool Olivier Coipel cover, who, of course, is doing our Action Comics 1000 variant. Now, as we move on, we've got more Batman, including Batman Sins of the Father, issue number two from Christos Gage. Now, this is spinning out of the Telltale Game series, so if you want to check out something that's coming from the world of video games, inspired by the world of comics, it goes full circle, and you guys should be going to this book. Then we also have the brand new issue of Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Very cool series from James Tiny in the fourth. And we've got some great stuff going on here as we see the turtles facing off with Bane and the mutagen and all the stuff that you don't want to see, but you do want to see because you know it's going to make for a great story. Now, as we continue on, we've got the latest issue of Batwoman, and things look ominous as the fall of the House of Cain begins. Marguerite Bennett's been doing a great job on this series for the last year, and I'm very excited to see the latest chapter of Batwoman's harrowing journey. Then we have the brand new issue of Harley Quinn, Angry Bird, Cold-Blooded Murder. Harley Quinn has been going through a who's who of Arkham's finest. And some very fun stuff is going on. I really like this Frank Cho cover with the Scarecrow on it because I just think that's cute and very comical. And it's a very fun series. If you guys haven't been checking it out, uh, Frank Thierry has been doing a great job with John Timms on art. Now we have the brand new issue of Nightwing. And we have some cool stuff unfolding in issue number 41. The Untouchable at last. The final judgment. Nightwing is going through quite a lot lately. And, you know, it's always engaging to see him kind of... You know, you, you, you like watching the people you like suffer. 
and maybe that's not the greatest mentality to have with real life, but with books, it's great. So that makes Nightwing a fantastic read. Then we have the brand new issue of Bombshells United from Marguerite Bennett, issue number 14. Very fun series. If you want to check out the Bombshells book, they've been going for a few years now, and they are a great read. I highly recommend checking them out. We've also got the second issue of Batman and Wonder Woman in Brave and the Bold from Liam Sharp. Very pretty book. Just so pretty, so cool, and so unique. A perfect read for a cool winter's day. Now we have the brand new issue and the brand new series for Cave Carson has an interstellar eye. Now, Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye was one of my favorite titles of a book. And now it's even better because it's an interstellar eye. And the series has only grown in scale and scope. And if you guys haven't been checking it out, it's one of Young Animal's coolest books. And I highly recommend it. Now we do have the brand new issue of Damage, issue number three from Tony Daniel and Robert Vendetti. As we see Wonder Woman facing off against our young I don't know if I should call him a hero. Our young, you know, our young lead as he is trying to navigate the harrowing path of being a hero. Then we have the brand new issue of Dead Man as we see a bunch of mystical characters popping up. We get to see, of course, Edric and the Demon. We see the Spectre. We see Zatanna. And we see that this is a great book. Neil Adams is doing a great job. We've also got the brand new issue of Future Quest. A couple different covers here. Jeff Parker is having a lot of fun on the series. And if you want to check out Mitor popping up in the pages of a book for the first time in goodness knows how long, this is your chance. Then we have the brand new issue of Green Lantern, Superhuman Trafficking. A couple cool covers here that I'll show you off, including this Brandon Peterson one, making Jessica Cruz look oh so lovely on top of the lantern. It has been a lovely read. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's been a lot of fun for the last 43 issues. I'm excited for the next 43. Then we have the brand new issue of Injustice 2, War in Gorilla City. And anytime Gorilla City is involved in literally anything ever, I am happy. Whether it's in the pages of Flash and Aquaman and Injustice, if it's got gorillas, I'm a happy guy. You know, maybe I'm simple, but that's okay. I'm a happy guy, and this book is a good reason why. Now, as we move on, we've also got the brand new issue of Justice League from Chris Rebreeston. We've got Phil Brionis coming in on art here, and we've got this very cool J.G. Jones cover. As we see, the, the League is facing off against the Wrath of the Red Lion. Of course, if you guys have been reading Deathstroke, you saw the Red Lion popping up in there, which was also written by Christopher Priest. And of course, you'll of course notice that he bears a striking resemblance to a certain cinematic hero, and there's no coincidence. He is a great character and a great read if you guys haven't been checking out Justice League. Now, we will bring it up and we'll talk about some of the collected editions that are out this week, including the Aliens Dead Orbit trade paperback, which collects the entire series. We've also got the Tomb Raider Archives hardcover edition. Very cool book. Already sold out on the website. Very great read if you are a Tomb Raider fan and you went to see the movie last week. Then we also have Cell Block Earth from Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray, one of the greatest team-ups in comics. They work on so many great books together. We've also got Harrow County being collected. Dark Times are coming. Very uh, harrowing read, as it would be. Then we've also got Aquaman, The Legend of Aquaman from Keith Giffen. Some cool stuff there. And we've got Batman New Gotham Volume 2. This is the Greg Rucka run on the title. So if you never read it and you love Rucka, this is a chance for you to check out one of his greatest runs. We've also got, and this makes me happy. This is really cool. We've got Tales of the Man Bat. And so this is just really cool because it's Man Bat, and Man Bat is super cool. I don't need to explain it further than that. Man Bat's awesome. Check out some books about Man Bat. Then we've got the latest volume of The Flash, and you guys know I'm a big old Flash fan, and Negative was awesome. Volume 5 of the series, it also serves as a jumping on point if you weren't already checking out the book. It's a great way to come into the franchise, and it brings back some elements of the past and future. Then we have something definitely from the past that is super cool to see. We've got Justice League Task Force being collected. I believe this is the first time this book has literally ever been collected. So this is very cool if you want some 90s Justice League. The Justice League were all over the place in the 90s. And this is, of course, one of the more famous runs. Then we've got Planetary Volume 2 from Warren Ellis and John Cassidy. A very critically acclaimed read. One of the most critically acclaimed of the Wildstorm universe and something that you guys should be checking out if you are checking out the current Wildstorm book. We've also got Wonder Woman Forgotten Legends from Kirk Busiek, a lot of classic tales from, uh, from Themyscira. Then we have Superman Action Comics, the Oz Effect hardcover. We're going to talk about more 
about that in a little bit, but that was the big Oz Effect storyline that was, of course, taken over the Superman title, and, or I'm sorry, the Action Comics title a few months back. Now, we will continue. We've got the brand new issue of Super Sons. You see John, you see Damien, and you see that they're getting into a bit of a squabble uh, as Talia al Ghul pops up in the life of her estranged son. Very, very fun and rewarding read if you are a fan of the characters. Then, of course, we've got a double dose of Superboy. Things aren't looking much better for him here in the pages of Superman issue number 43 as we see Bizarro Boy, or should I say Boy Zaro, popping up to make his counterpart's life absolutely miserable, but to make the fans happy. You see, I'm going with this whole theme of if the hero's miserable, we're happy. I'm kind of like Zoom, you know Zoom, Hunter Zolomon? I kind of I agree with him on a lot of things. Then we do have the reprinted edition of the Swamp Thing Winter Special, the 80-page giant. Now, what I like about this edition of it is it actually has this nice little spine treatment. So if you want to actually take it and you want to put it on your shelf, because it's such a fantastic read, now is a great way to do it. It just slides right onto the shelf. Then we have the brand new issue of Deathbed to close us off. Brand new series from Joshua Williamson and Riley Rosmo. It's only on issue two, so it's easy to invest because it's the second issue. So you pick up two, then you go back, you go into our back issues, you pick up issue number one. Very good stuff. Now we will hit some of the indie books here as we have Max Bemis in Lucy Dreaming. I am super curious about this because Max Bemis has been doing some really amazing books, a lot of versatility, and now I'm excited to see what he does with his talents, bringing them over to Boom. We also have the brand new issue of Ninjak, issue number five from, from Christos Gage and Tomas Giorello. Gorgeous book, very cool read. And we also, also have the brand new issue of Quantum and Woody, and that cover is pretty cool, but you know what's even cooler? This one, because it's really shiny. Uh, sometimes it's the simple things in life that make you happy, and I'll tell you that this book has been making me happy. It's been a lot of fun. Daniel Kiplesmith and Kano have been doing a great job on the run, exploring their complicated family dynamics and, uh, you know, the goat, like the actual goat in their life. There's a physical goat and the role he plays, and it's cool. It's really fun. I actually have really been enjoying this series. Now we have the brand new issue of the comic book history of comics, Piracy, dealing about uh, a very you know, important issue in the world of comics, and also just all these books have been so great. Fred Valente has been doing a great job exploring the history of the medium itself. Now as we move on, you'll see something that makes me very happy. You'll see the brand new issue of Gears of War, The Rise of Rom, as we explore the complicated past of one of the Gears franchise's most celebrated villains. We also have the brand new issue of Ghostbusters Answer the Call, as well as the second issue of Punk's Not Dead from Black Crown, a very fun indie series that I have been enjoying quite a bit. We also have the second issue of The Spider King, a lot of fun there, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe, issue number 20. Very cool stuff if you are a fan, and we got a couple different covers here that I'll show you, of the very cool franchise featuring all your favorite mutated animals. You know, who doesn't love mutated animals? Uh, that's probably a weird thing to say, right? Let's move on. Then we've got the brand new issue of 30 Days of Night, issue number four. Very cool if you want that horror fix. And then we hit Image, and we've got a lot of great stuff, including the brand new issue of Dark Thing. Things are lighting up as Miles Gunter explores this very cool take on a uh, supernatural archetype of a vampire. And it's a very cool read, so definitely check it out. Then we also have the brand new issue of Death of Love, issue number two, as well as a brand new issue of Descender from Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. Loving this book, loving how pretty it is, and we'll just show you how pretty some of these covers are. Such a great book, such a great read if you guys are a fan of sci-fi. Then we also have the brand new issue of Dissonance, issue number two, very cool, two a very cool cover there. Then we have issue five of Evolution. Loving this book, loving the design. James Asmus has been having a lot of fun on this run. Then we have the further adventures of Nick Wilson, as well as Ice Cream Man, issue number three. And if you guys haven't read Ice Cream Man, Ice Cream Man is a great horror series. We've got issue two and a reprint right here that also came out this week. So if you want to check out one of the cooler, more creative horror books coming out right now, I definitely recommend Ice Cream Man. Look at how... Look at how unnerving that is on that reprint cover. That's not the ice cream that you want. I would not trust this man. Definitely not because, you know, of the whole eating people thing. Then we've got the collected edition of the Golden House of Samarkand. Very cool stuff here if you like some European comics, as well as Star Trek New Adventures Volume 5. 
Then we have this nice hardcover edition of Transformers, the IDW collection. This is volume 7, always making pretty editions. IDW makes some of the prettiest books. I love what they do. Then we have Neil Adams' Comic Books and the Holocaust. We spoke out a very cool reflection on a very important era in the comic book, you know, comic book history. Then we have the collected edition of Black Science, Volume 7, Extinction is the Rule, from Rick Remender and Matteo Scalera, as well as Cyber Force, Volume 3, from Mark Silvestri, of course, one of the more popular Image franchises. Then we have the first volume of Moonstruck from Grace Ellis, very fun series, as well as some stuff from Marvel. We've got the Infinity War prelude. Of course, everybody's hyped up for Infinity War, understandably so. That latest trailer looked absolutely insane. And if you want to find out what's going on inside the inner workings of our heroes, check out the book. And then we have this nice omnibus edition of The Avengers Volume 3 from Roy Thomas, John Buscema, and Sal Buscema, which is, of course, some of the, it's one of the most noteworthy eras in the history of the Avengers. We've got a lot of cool stuff. We've got Red Wolf. We've got a couple different covers here. That Alan Davis edition looks real pretty. And if you look here on the back, you'll see all these classic books, all these classic covers that fans know and love, including seeing how the Black Panther was integrated into the team. So definitely a book you want to check out. Then we have uh, some modern stuff. We've got Sabretooth, round two in Iron Fist, a very cool read. If you haven't been checking out this Iron Fist book, it has been a great read, and it is definitely worth investing some time into because it's got Sabretooth. Who doesn't love Sabretooth? Now, we will bring it back down, and we'll talk about some more hit books from Image, including Hit Girl. That's right, the reprinted edition of issue number one of her latest series from Mark Millar and Ricardo Ortiz, a very fun book. Then we also have Mark Millar again, in Kick-Ass, issue number two, a couple different covers here, including the very cool Francesco Francavilla cover that I really enjoy. And I think it is a fantastic read if you haven't been checking out the franchise. Then we have the brand new issue of Killer Be Killed. Very cool. A couple different covers here, including this Virgin cover here that shows off the art, making it real pretty. But then, of course, you know, we've got the regular one as well for issue number 17, as well as issue number 15 of Monstrous. A couple different covers here as well. Very pretty stuff. Very pretty book. If you've never read Monstrous, it's one of the prettiest books on the stands. Now, we will continue. We have the brand new issue of Moonshine, issue number 8, as well as the latest issue of Outcast by Robert Kirkman and Paul Ezeketa, issue number 34. Very cool book as well. Now we will continue and we've got the brand new issue of Regression as well as Rumble. And this is a great cover for Rumble. I really dig what they're doing here. Very cool stuff. And it's just a great book overall as we hit issue number four of the latest series. If you've never read Rumble before, it is a good time to be checking out this book. It's only on issue four. You still got time. You can pick up the back issues. We got the back issues. Read the book. It's awesome and it's got some great action. Now, we do have the brand new issue of Southern Cross with a very creepy cover, but very cool nonetheless, as well as the brand new issue of Stray Bullets. And finishing off image, we've got the brand new issue of Witchblade from Caitlin Crittridge doing some really cool stuff here. And then we've got the brand new issue of Youngblood, issue number 10 from Chad Bowers and Jim Toe. Now we hit Marvel, and there's a lot of cool stuff from Marvel, and we start off with a reprinted edition of Avengers No Surrender, issue number 681, but then we hit the main event. We hit 685, and 685 is super awesome because it's got Red Hulk wearing the Iron Patriot suit, and he's fighting against Bruce Banner Hulk, and if that doesn't sell you on the book, I don't know what is going to because this book is crazy. It is awesome, and I'm loving everything going on about it. Now we will move on. We've got the brand new issue of Captain America, issue number 698. This is, a, I'm sorry, I said brand new. This is a reprint because the book is just flying through, flying out of the store, and hopefully flying into your hands because it's a great read. Mark Wade and uh, Chris Hamney are doing a really good job on the title. Now we do have the brand new issue of Damnation, and you can see things aren't looking particularly great because the Avengers have been corrupted by Mephisto, but oh no, so has our hero, so has Doctor Strange. How will he ever survive? Well, you got to pick up the book, you got to find out, and you, you got to take my word on it because Donny Cates and uh, Nick Spencer are doing a really amazing job on the series. Now we will bring it up and we'll talk about some collected editions from Marvel, including the Marvel Masterworks. Marvel 2 and 1, of course, if you're reading the current Marvel 2 and 1 book by Chip Zarsky, Valerio Skidi, and Jim Chung, you've been having a lot of fun. But if you want to read the original 2 and 1 and check out some fantastic adventures of the thing, there's your fix. Check it out. It's awesome. 
We've also got the paperback edition of Spider-Man 2, and then we've got something that makes me very happy. We've got the Star Wars Legends edition of the Clone Wars Volume 2, collecting some of the classic, now classic, Star Wars comics exploring the Clone Wars. Some cool stuff, and you get to see some uh, Tom Taylor work in there, which is really cool. Then we also have the brand new volume of Generation X, Survival of the Fittest, as well as X-Men Blue, the latest volume of the Cross Time Capers storyline, as well as a Zero volume. That's right, it's got some flashback tales. If you want to read some classic stories with uh, the founding fathers of the X-Men, there you go. That's your book. That's where you look for the stories. Now we bring it back down, and we've got the brand new issue of Hulk. That's right, Incredible Hulk issue 714. World War Hulk 2 starts here. Amadeus Joe is going to punch a lot of people because it's called World War Hulk. And if you guys know the Hulk, you know he likes to smash. And if you've been reading Incredible Hulk, you know that Amadeus is not in a good place right now. So I am very curious to see what kind of havoc he unleashes on the world. And we also have the brand new issue of Iron Fist, issue number 78, tying in with that Damnation storyline, which is very cool, as Iron Fist is one of the heroes that is called in to battle to face off against his corrupted Avengers. And then we have the brand new issue of Iron Man in Hong Kong Heroes. It is featuring the debut of an all-new armored hero, and it's very fun if you're looking for an Iron Man side book that is not tied in with the current continuity too heavily, and you want to just read a fun adventure with the character. Now we will continue with the brand new issue of Monsters Unleashed. As you can see, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur popping up. It only makes sense when you got a book filled with monsters that you're going to have one of the greatest monster duos popping up. We also have the brand new issue of Miss Marvel, issue number 28, as well as issue number 7 of The Runaways with an awkward family photo, but I think they look cute. I like their outfits. I like, I like everything about this book. I think they're having quite a lot of fun. Despite all the heartache and, you know, hardship and horrible things that are happening to them. But hey, you know, you, you, you deal with what you got. Then we have the brand new issue of Spider-Gwen, issue number 30. A lot of cool stuff going on here as we see uh, some interesting dynamics unfolding in the Spider-Gwen book that I don't want to get too into because it'll spoil it if you're not caught up. But I'll tell you, it's been pretty cool. We also have the reprinted edition of Amazing Spider-Man, issue 796. Of course, this is tying in with the whole... Red Goblin storyline that we have got unfolding, and it's been absolutely crazy. Then we have the brand new issue of Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, which of course focuses on little Annie, you know, who is the daughter of Spider-Man in the future. Some very fun stuff there if you want a fun all-ages Spider-Man book. There you go. Then we have the brand new issue of Poe Dameron, issue number 25. Charles Sewell's been doing an amazing job on this book. I've been really loving it. It's one of my fa it's probably my favorite Star Wars book coming out right now, honestly. It's just been really cool, and I've really enjoyed it from the beginning. We also have issue number 45 of the main Star Wars book. Whoa, 45. We are getting up there, and we are having a great time. And I want to show you this absolutely terrifying action figure cover because it's got Bib Fortuna on it. And I just read some classic stuff with a lot of the Twi'leks, so it's cool seeing that he happened to be on the cover this week. That made me happy. That's a personal thing. Then we have the brand new issue of Tales of Suspense. And who is that on the cover? Well, I guess that's the whole mystery as Hawkeye and the Winter Soldier are trying to go around the world and figure out the mystery behind this mysterious new Black Widow that seems to be knocking off foes left and right. We also have the brand new issue of Thanos with one of the coolest covers of the week. That's right. I love this Christian Ward uh, cover that's got, like, the cosmic ghost rider. And we sold out of this thing online in literally less than a day. So if you want to get the cover, the only way you're going to get it is by braving the storm, coming into the store right now and picking it up because I'm going to tell you it's going to be gone by the end of the day. Then we have the brand new issue of Mighty Thor, issue number 705, and we've got this very beautiful art germ cover here, which I definitely enjoy, definitely love what's going on in this book, despite how sad it makes me. Then we have the double feature with uh, True Believers of Venom, Dark Origin, and Venom Flashpoint. Very fun book there. And then we have a plethora of different covers for Weapon H number one, which is, of course, from Greg Pack and Corey Smith, who will be having for a lovely signing this Friday, and it should be a lot of fun. And then we have the brand new issue of Cable. You see the New Mutants cover there showcasing Cannonball. Gotta love Cannonball. He's my favorite member of the New Mutants. And then we've got X-Men Gold. So that's our week. That's our wall. There's a lot of great so stuff. So to start us enjoy. off, we've got that brand new issue of Aquaman from Dan Abnett. Now, Aquaman has been doing a great job for the last couple years under the 
you know, oversight of Dan Abnett. He's been having a lot of fun. And now we get to see some classic elements of Aquaman continuity brought into the storyline as we see uh, Ocean Master popping up for the first time in a while. Let's see if I can just show you. Good old Ocean Master looks like he's out for power. He's going to be trying to ruin the life of his brother and you know isn't that just like brothers they always come into your life just to ruin everything for you and it's been a really fun ride despite you know the family squabbles now we also have the brand new issue of batman issue number 43 and this book has been super amazing if you haven't been reading batman lately you've been missing out as catwoman and batman get ever closer to their wedding day as Poison Ivy tries to ruin everything for them. And let's see if we can find a nice pretty, pa well, it's easy to find a pretty page here because it's Mikel Jenin drawing the art. And you can tell right away, I'll even just open to the first page. First page, already gorgeous because we've got Mikel Jenin drawing Harley Quinn, Superman, New Superman, Supergirl, and all these characters in one book. <sighs> Come on, that, that makes it super fun. And it is a great read. Now we also have the brand new series, the brand new jumping in point for Cave Carson as he now has an interstellar eye. Now this book has been a lot of fun. If you want to check out a cool adventure series set within just this weird fantastical world, this is one of the books I highly recommend. I loved what they've been doing since the beginning of the Young Animal launch. And let's see if I can just show you some of the crazy art here by Michael Avon Oeming, who's doing an amazing job. John Rivera, of course, writing the tales and doing a great job as well. This book has been a lot of fun, and I've been really digging it. Now we have the brand new issue of Damage, and you'll see here that we've got Wonder Woman popping up in the pages of Damage. And, you know, Wonder Woman kind of wins a lot of fights, and Damage has so far been kind of going on a tear, so you have to wonder... What happens, you know, you got Unstoppable Force, a movable object. Great comic. Easy. We also have the brand new issue of Superman as we see Boy Zaro popping up. We've got, appropriately, the John Boy cover here. And this book has been really cool. If you guys haven't been checking it out, I actually, I super loved the last issue. I thought it was really fun. Um, and now I want to see if I can show you a playful page as we see Boy Zaro's, uh, misunderstanding of how things are supposed to go of course last issue superboy accidentally probably overstepped some boundaries and may have caused something he didn't intend but i'm excited to see how it plays out and how bizarro you know fits into this storyline now we've got a couple different indie books and one of the ones i had to talk about was a brand new issue of wwe now if you guys uh, haven't been checking out the WWE comic. They are a lot of fun. It's a really cool series. And now we are focusing on the women's revolution, which is really great. As, of course, you can see here on the cover, you've got Bailey, you've got Sasha Banks, you've got Becky Lynch, and you've got Charlotte, the four horsewomen of NXT. And it focuses on their rise into the WWE. And I really think it's a great read. If you haven't been checking it out, Sergio Kuna is doing a great job on the art. <laughs> And it's also fun because we get to see a lot of just cool little moments. If you are a wrestling fan, I definitely recommend checking the series out. Now, one book that I've really been enjoying that I completely was sold on from the art alone is Punk's Not Dead. Now, Punk's Not Dead is a new book from Black Crown, which is one of the imprints of IDW. And the loose premise is this kind of delinquent kid who doesn't have a great life his mom takes him to all these weird talk shows and it's like his mom's like auditioning for him for maury basically where like he keeps going on all these shows they pretend that they've got this horrible life and then they go to the next show and they do it again and they get paid a lot of money so the kid's life isn't super awesome but then he meets a mysterious ghost who changes his life forever and it's really cool it's really great it's got a lot of like british rock themes like in it like a lot of references and stuff like that and it's just great and there's one page in this that is a double page splash i really wanted to show off um that's just absolutely gorgeous i've really been enjoying the book and i think that it's a really fun read if you want to just check out a cool new book from black crown they're doing some great stuff and this book is definitely something that you should really be checking out then we have the brand new issue of kick-ass kick-ass issue number two and this book has been definitely kicking ass. It has been a lot of fun. The first issue, we got a lot of violence. We got a lot of fun, you know, banter as we get to see our new lead, our new woman under the mask facing off against a crime world. And uh, she kind of has a bit of a different approach than, uh, you know, Dave did. She's kind of doing things her own way. And I want to see if I can show you anything without, like, 
horribly, horribly scarring all the children. Um, I don't know if that's possible. I actually don't think that's possible. But I'll tell you that this book is great for uh, for the adults out there. It's been a lot of fun, and you should check it out. Now we do hit Marvel, and we've got a lot of cool stuff, including the brand new issue of Avengers. And so U.S. Avengers was super good, and I really loved it, and I loved all these silly things that they were doing. But this is, i got to tell you, one of the silliest things I've seen. This is the Red Hulk in an Iron Patriot armor facing off against the Immortal Hulk. And that's awesome. I'm sold. Al Ewing, Jim Zub, and Mark Wade have been doing a great job with the Avengers. But this issue, we get to see Paco Medina really show off his artistic ability as we see this giant slugfest between two of the biggest behemoths in the Marvel Universe, and we all get to watch, and we don't have to worry about getting punched by either one of them, which makes me really happy because I don't want to be fighting them, but I want them to fight each other, and I just want to watch it because it's awesome. And it's been a great read. If you're digging No Surrender, you know, I mean, we keep having to fill up the shelves. We keep selling out of all the books because it's been such a great read. So check it out while you still can. Now we do have that brand new issue of Damnation, Damnation, issue number three. The book has been really cool, and if you've been reading the Doctor Strange tie-ins, I also do recommend those because they've been counter, you know, they've been, ex what, counterpoint, they've been a nice expansion on the main storyline, and I've really been digging what's going on. Donny Cates and Nick Spencer are doing a great job, and we'll just open up to the first page I open up to. And we've just got some cool action, sequence here, uh, action sequences here that are really worthwhile as we see Iron Fist, we see Ghost Rider, and we see all these weird demented versions of the Avengers. It's fun, and that's awesome, and it's really cool, it's twisted, and it's creative. I really enjoy what's going on here. Then we've got a brand new issue of Incredible Hulk, issue number 714, as we see Amadeus Cho on a tear. If you guys have been reading uh, Totally Awesome Hulk into Incredible Hulk, you know that Amadeus Cho has kind of had this long-running uh, metaphor where he's been putting the Hulk into the, the trunk of his car, like metaphorically speaking, and now the Hulk has completely burst out of the trunk, now the Hulk has completely taken over, and now Amadeus is himself uh, metaphorically trapped in the trunk. So we get to see the Hulk rampaging through the entire planet after rightfully so being pretty upset as he was jettisoned off the Earth, and I definitely think that this is a fun adventure if you guys are a fan of the series. I'm excited to see what Greg Pak does with it. Now, another book that I've been really enjoying from Marvel is Tales of Suspense. Matt Rosenberg's been doing a great job as he's been really doing a... He's been writing a fantastic Hawkeye and a fantastic Bucky, and I really liked their banter. And I don't want to open this up and spoil too much for you, but Travel Foreman's been doing a great job on this art as well. Whoop, there's a spoiler for you. Uh, let's not open it up to the spoilers. Uh... Let's see if I can get some cool generic action sequences. Nope, these are all super spoilers. But that just means there's more reason for you to pick it up so you can flip through it so you can see what happens. It's awesome, and I really like this book. It's actually, like, one of the coolest books I think Marvel's putting out right now. I'm really having a lot of fun. Then we have something that's not fun, something that's really sad. Uh, like, actually, genuinely, humanly, um, emotionally sad. Uh, Mighty Thor issue number 705. So this is, of course, the death of the Mighty Thor storyline. As we see in Jason Aaron and Russell Donovan have been kind of building things up for quite some time. As we see the Mangog facing off against the Asgardians. And now we get to see the natural conclusion of things. And it's what fans have known was coming for a long time. And I think it's the only way that the story really could have ended. But it is a really sad issue. And it's really well written. And I'm next issue is going to be like all the tie up for a lot of things but i gotta tell you i super recommend this book if you haven't been checking out mighty thor now is like the best time to be checking it out because the book is just firing on all cylinders and i love everything in this book it's so pretty and i can't show you a single page i could show you this nice art germ variant that's a nice variant right okay now we have a couple books that are fun that are cool if you want some action in your life we've got the true believers we've got in my left hand, we've got the uh, point one issue that this was the uh, introduction, the first mission of Flash Thompson as Agent Venom. So that was really cool and really fun. And then we've got the Zeb Wells run over here. Really cool stuff. If you want to check out some venomous books, these are a dollar, a dollar. Everybody's got a dollar in their pocket. Why don't you put a comic in your pocket instead? Great time to check out some really cool books. 
Then we do have the brand new issue of Weapon H, a very cool cover here from Adam Kubert that I really dig because, of course, it homages some classic Wolverine. And we see that the newest uh, hulked out hero might not be a hero after all. Of course, Weapon H was created by the Weapon X program. He was uh, facing some crazy foes in that but here we get to see that the wendigo has returned and wendigo is a classic hulk villain so it's really great to see a new interpretation of that character popping up in the books and i really dig what's going on here greg pack and Corey smith are also going to be joining us this friday for a signing so you come into the store you buy the book you see greg you see Corey, you go hey guys that book was amazing and then you meet them you get the signing and the book makes you happy and all the good things in life come together just so nice Tied up in a little bow, a little adamantium laced bow because it's, you know, Weapon H. Very cool stuff. Very excited. And I'm very excited for the signing. Then we have the brand new issue of Cable. And this made me really happy. This is a new launching point for Cable. If you haven't been reading Cable already, this is a great time to get into the character just in time for the Deadpool movie coming out in a couple months. And I really like what we see in this issue is we get to see Cable going back to his time travel roots. But what I really like is this actually serves as a follow-up to some of the stuff that was in the Dwayne Swear and Zinsky run on Cable. Now, a few years back, this is going back a few years now, Dwayne Swerenzinski wrote a wonderful book about Cable and Hope, his daughter, and that was a really fun book and my favorite run on the character. And now we get to see a nice follow-up as we see Hope, as we see Cable, as we see them unite in a father-daughter time travel adventure. I'm I'm really happy. And it's also got, you know, guns and violence and action and cable stuff. But it's really cool. Uh, so I really dig it. Now we do have a couple collections I'm going to talk about, and the first one I got to spotlight is Aliens Dead Orbit. Now, if you guys did not check this book out, this is your chance. It's a four-issue miniseries from Dark Horse, and it is super awesome as James Stoko really does an amazing job with the art here, showcasing what makes him such a noted artist, uh, so popular, so many fans, and it's just awesome. We've got some really great book quotes on the series, on the back and on the front, and let me just open up to awesome that was easy it's so easy to flip open this book and immediately be grabbed by the action immediately be grabbed by how gorgeous it is please check it out it's great we're only gonna have a couple of copies left so you gotta act quick then we do have the brand new hardcover edition of the oz effect in action comics now this is a lenticular hardcover now that's pretty sweet but this book is awesome it's really great it's a nice follow-up to a lot of the events from dc uh universe rebirth which of course came out a couple years ago and now we get to see the follow-up on that but what i actually want to show you because i'm i like dust jackets but i like when dc does this because they make such pretty hard covers and this is so cool and i love it and i also love that when i open this up to show you that I opened up to this page, which is one of my favorite pages in the whole story, because I just think it's really funny. And I think that this book is really great. So check out the Oz Effect. We have the hardcover now. So come by, pick it up, and then you're caught up on one of the biggest stories in DC. And then to close this off, we've got one from Marvel as well. We've got the Cross Time Caper storyline in X-Men Blue. Now, this is a lot of fun because it gets to bring back a lot of elements of the X-Men that we haven't seen in a while. We get to see Generation X. We get to see the X-Men 2099. And we get to have a great time along the way. It also cleans up some of the continuity from... Uh, the all-new X-Men series that ran a couple years ago. We get to see the nice follow-up to a lot of those plot points. And this is a great read if you are a classic X-Men fan. And that's our week. That's all the books I've got in front of me. There's way more on the wall. I'm probably just going to immediately go run back to that wall, grab more books, and get super excited because it's an amazing week in the world of comics, and we are super excited to share it with you. So please come by. Please check out some of our cool books. Check out the signing on Friday with Greg Pack and Corey Smith for Weapon Age number one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Keep an eye out for some killer sales coming up your way, and hopefully we'll see you soon like this video be sure to let us know in the comments section below and let us know what you guys are reading what books are making you super excited we're excited you're excited we should all be excited if you guys want to get more excited about more midtown comics events and things and life and sales follow us on all of our social media you can find us on instagram you can find us on facebook you can find us on twitter and you already found us on youtube so hopefully we'll see you guys soon